ब्रह्मा गुरु विष्णु गुरु गुरुर्देव महेश्वर गुरुर्व पर श्री गुरवे चिन्मय ध्यालोक्यम सचराचर हम दर्शित अस्मा श्री गुरवे नम ममते यत सर्वा भूता प्रतिभा स्थितोपशम So we are still in the story of Lavana, and we've had last week we did the seven stages of ignorance and the seven stages of knowledge. And I think that's where we stop, wasn't it? Mark, can you tell us what page and what verse we're on? I think we're starting a new section. So page 75, uh, Sloka 71, 72. All right, is that a new section? Yes. All right. And Puneet, may I ask you, I can hear better when Puneet chants because he's right here in the room. You mind if I switch on the fan? Pardon me? Can I switch on the fan if you don't mind? Go right ahead. Yeah. Too much incense? No, I'm just getting really warm. All right. Page 75. Page 75. What page again? Yes, page 75. Section 5, right? Yes, please. Okay. Uh, section 5. Avidhya, avidhyam Ahatmayam, the ma majesty or power of nescience or spiritual ignorance. एतत्ते कथितं राम ज्ञानं वै साप्त भौमिकं त्वं महात्मत्यं अविध्यायां पुनः शृणु रघुद्वः राम बोर्न इन द फॅमिली ऑफ रघु दिस नॉलेज हॅविंग सेव्हन स्टेजेस हॅज बीन नरेटेड टू यू यू हियर अगेन अबाउट द मॅजेस्टी ऑर माइट ऑफ स्पिरिच्युअल इग्नोरन्स So he went through all the seven stages. And again, the thing that I think is so very important, self-realization takes place at the fourth stage. This is according to Ramana Maharshi, not Jim. And then when asked, why have three more superior to it been enumerated by the scripture? Bhagavan says, these are not stages of bondage and release. They have to do with the experiences of the realized person. These are post-enlightenment samadhis. And they are not to be achieved by mere will or effort. In fact, if you're struggling to get one of these samadhis, you're not even a jnani yet. The mark of the man or woman of knowledge is they are completely content. But if the desire for deeper absorption arises spontaneously, then they keep going further and further. So now Ram's going on, or um, Dathatri is going on with the story. Go ahead. 
लवणा सौ मही पाल तत्र दृष्ट्वा तथा भ्रम द्वितीय दिवस गंतुम प्रवृत्ति महाटवी स त्र विहर तास्तु स्वृत्ता सलक सकलानपी दृष्ट्वान् पृष्ट व्रांश्रैव ज्ञात पाश्व विशिष्मये विलपंती तदारण्ये वृद्धा प्रपच्छ भूमिप so this king lavana having seen there such delusion and determined to go to that great forest on that second day saw inquired knew and wondered at all those occurrences in his life roaming there then the king inquired of an old lady who was weeping in the forest so remember Lav lavana he was in a trance for two muhurtas about an hour and a half and during the hour and a half in his audience chamber a whole another life took place he gets on the horse he goes through the forest he passes under a tree with a creeper he grabs the creeper the horse goes we never hear about the horse again he falls down he spends a restless night no food no water in the morning the woman comes and he says give me food she says i can i'm an outcast he says i don't care give it to me he says all right i'll give it to you if you marry me he says all right so he marries her then he lives 60 years in this village then a famine comes and everybody leaves and people are dying and he says i can't stand it anymore and he builds a big fire a big pyre jumps on the pyre the next thing you know he's back in is palace so here a couple days later he decides to go out and sure enough there's the forest that was in his vision he passes through and there's like this remnant of a village and there's an old lady weeping Let's see what happens. Going on. Kim vrittam tava dukhaya kanva tam anushochasi iti prishta cha sa praha pratirme pukka sadhipaha. What is the event that has caused you grief? Or whom are you mourning for? Thus asked, she said, My husband is the head of a lowly tribe. So going on she's relating this story Avayoshva suta prapa daiva dintu samampatin sukhani sa chiram bhukva prasuta tanaya sutan our daughter obtained by chance a husband equal to the moon having enjoyed all happiness for a long time she gave birth to daughters and sons So we're finding out that the daughter of this old lady married this fabulous son let's see who he was going on kena chatvath kalena grame durbhiksha pidita te sarve hi gata duram paschatvam va gata iti then after some time when the village was afflicted by famine all of them went far away or did they die thus mourning for those who are fit to be mourned we remain extremely distressed so the old lady doesn't know what happened to them but it's just like in his vision that the magician made him have did it happen or did he dream it how could it have happened over 60 years when it was only an hour and a half back in the palace something here is goofy going on 
इति श्रुत्वोचितै दानै एतासां दुख संशयं कृत्वा च विस्मया विष्टो दृष्टलोक परावरह ज्ञाता विद्या स्वभावो सौ आगजनाम गृहम नृपह Thus having heard and having ended the anguish of these ladies by suitable gifts this king who had seen the earlier and latter life and known the essential nature of spiritual ignorance arrived at his house filled with wonder so he gives him some money to help him out so the question is did it really happen did he go back in time did he just imagine it so what's happening here yoga vasishta is trying to strike down our concretized and linear view of the world and time in it For example, many of you have siblings. And you're adults. Have you ever remembered an event from childhood and your sibling says, "Oh no, it didn't happen that way. It was blah 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 blah." Have that experience? Yeah. Or you go to the parent, the parent says, "No, it didn't happen like that at all." So the mind creates all these narratives. True story. I have a very, very dear friend who's now eighty-six, and he's of assisted living. And one of the things that is beginning to bother him is that he's definitely losing memory. So in our conversation, I said, "You know, we only encounter God in the now." In the end, who cares about memories? Let it go. Right here, right now, it's the only reality. Going on. श्रीराम उवाच कथम एतद ब्रह्म स्वप्न सत्य तो मगत संशय भगवान् सौम्यम न मे गलती चेतस श्रीराम सैड टेल मी ब्राह्मण और सेज हाउ इज दिस दर ड्रीम हैड बिकम ट्रू होली वन दिस डाउट ऑफ माइंड डज नॉट वैनिश फ्रॉम माई माइंड सो इट्स लाइक the matrix it's like inception how is it that what was a dream in the mind of lamana turned out to be true and the time dilation according to lavana he leaves the palace he goes out and 60 years pass but back in the palace it was an hour and a half and now he finds it actually happened but it happened 60 years ago because he just came from the powers so it's effing with our minds is what it's doing on purpose so many of us are convinced i'm right the way i see is right you don't agree with me up much you so one of the things i say in the beginning when we enter this work we think the world is real and god is a mystery the table is real the chair is real the couch is real god i do not know actually it's the other way around it's this world 
That's the mystery. As it's all just this incredibly weird play of the mind. But the self, yourself, which is what God is, that you can know absolutely. And that is real. It's the only thing you will ever know absolutely. Everything else is subject to doubt. Any thoughts on this? So what's the practice imply? The yogi learns not to take her own mind seriously or anybody else's. That's well, an interesting opinion. We learn to get off this position of having to prove a point or having to be right. Because it's all just the mysterious play of the mind. Next one. Vashishta Uvacha Sarvam Etat Avidhyayam Sambhagavat Seva Sraghava Asacha Sadibha Sadiva Bhati Swapne Vishwa Na Bhogati Vashishta said Raghava Rama all this all this does indeed happen in spiritual ignorance. That which does not exist appears to exist just as the movement of clouds in dreams. So the entire phenomenal universe is not essentially different than a dream. I like to say you are the God of your dream. In your dream, your one unified mind out of itself creates a world of people, places, things, and situations. A body from which you peep out at it an ego with which you're identified, thoughts and feelings inside, and they all seem So also Ishwara is dreaming all this. And these individual body, mind, intellects are all characters in Ishwara's dream. But they are no more real. The characters in your dreams. Going on. There was a note that I missed to read. Okay, yeah. note. Let's be noted. The term avidya, literally absence of knowledge, is translated here as spiritual ignorance. It is that which makes the soul or individualized consciousness forget its real nature, the eternal, pure, being consciousness bliss, which is ever free and untainted by the limitations of worldly existence and impose upon itself the state of a doer or enjoyer. That's good. So we tend to use, not always, the term avidya or ajnanam both of those, to refer to personal experience of ignorance, we tend to use the word maya to refer to macrocosmic ignorance. And it is through that ignorance that consciousness seems to appear as a world of name and form with beings in it that do not know that it's just the play of consciousness. Going on. Drishtam yat pakkane ragnya tatra shambari kehaya tatra yola sita vidya saivanye dhyuriti dhruvam Whatever was seen there by the king in the hut of the outcast by the act of the juggler 
and what would and what flashed there on the following day, that was only spiritual ignorance, certainly. So what was in his hallucination created by the juggler and what was seen there on the following day? Oh, are just spiritual ignorance. So what they're doing in the guise of a story is saying the same thing we find in the Mandukya Upanishad. So in the first chapter, the Agama Prakaraka, the scripture talks about the four padas, quarters of Om, a Uma in silence waking dream deep sleep state and the consciousness in which they arise and move but in godapada's second chapter titled vaipatya falseness i think it's the fourth verse the fourth paragraph where he basically says all the objects in the dream are unreal that we see them proves that they are unreal. The waking state is just like it. Everything you see is unreal. And the proof of its unreality is that you can see it. Any objective phenomena, gross or subtle, is vaipatya, falseness. Only aham, I, is real. No matter what state you're in. Now, the interesting thing about this world of sansara is it tells you that it's real. I was talking with a person last night about they were doing Molly, I guess it's called. What's Molly? Ecstasy. Ecstasy, MDMA. Yeah. And they were feeling love, connection, insight. Maybe you've had those experiences if you've done those drugs. But the point I want to stress is the drug tells you that what you experienced is real. Oh, I felt so connected to everyone and everything. Where were you? Oh, home alone in my apartment. <laughs> oh, I resolved all my issues with my parents. It was just incredible. Where were your parents? Oh, they're back where they live. It's bull pucky. But it tells you that it's real. Oh, Jim, I really did process that. I really did have this experience. Meaning it told you that what you experienced, which was a mind state, was real. So I borrow what Chogum Trungpa Rinpoche said. Drug experiences are a double sansara. They are an illusion about this world, which is an illusion about what's real. If you can see it, if you can experience it, if it's a mind state, no matter how ecstatic, first of all, it's going to pass. But you are not a mind state. And you do not pass. You are the eternal factor. Let 
go of stupid preoccupation with mind states. Any thoughts? Would you consider a spiritual experience to be a double samsara actually in that context? What do you mean by spiritual experience? I don't know, I'm getting, getting high in uh, doing, let's say, pranayama. Getting high what? And doing pranayama. Well, you answer it for yourself. Did it have a beginning and an end? Did it occur in time and space? Did it have qualities or characteristics? Does it mean in the world of transactions it isn't useful? In other words, not overdrawing your bank account is useful too. But is it real? Not when we consider reality with a capital R. Now listen carefully. What frees the mind is when the mind itself sees its own unreality. Then, in a way, it no longer is a mind. Did that make sense? Yeah. I guess I was just comparing it to that double samsara um, example. When you say it's a dream. I'm, I'm not sure I would, I would go so far as to use that kind of language. First of all, it would probably insult some of the practitioner. I don't mind insulting drug users. <laughs> I mean, yoga is a thorn that's used to remove another thorn in your finger. Then both you throw away. That means pranayama, asana, uh, pilgrimages, puja, mantra. Vedanta never says not to do these things. Vedanta says, if you do not yet have a subtle enough mind to understand what Yoga Vasishta is saying, then I by all means huff and puff and do your asana and climb up to the top of mountains and chant the name of the infinite and go to the temple and do puja. Why? because it will, in the end, purify your mind. So did you understand? The, these things are to be done sequentially. You've heard me talk about the pedagogical journey that Shankara takes us on. Remember? Mm -hmm. So it all has to do with where in that pedagogical journey the student is. All right, going on. Good question, though. It is warm in here, isn't it? We'll pretend we're in Delhi. Tatkale Lavane Nashu. Trishtoya Swapna Vibramaha Saeva Savidam Prapta Tadapukkasa Chetasi. Whatever dreamlike illusion was seen for a time, for a time being by Lavana immediately, that itself attained to consciousness or perception then in the mind of the tribal man. So, what happened? The vivid imagery that he saw in his trance state when he went out there because of his intense sankalpa, all of a sudden it became real for him. Going on. So is he implying that because he considered the dream real while he was dreaming it, it just continued? Well, that's exactly what we do. This is literature, first of all. 
Don't get literalistic with it. But uh, let's see if I can give an example. Many of us will walk into a room and we're convinced that people are judging us. Any of you ever had that condition? Actually, most people are not because they're thinking about themselves. <laughs> you're not One of my biggest enough. problems for years. You're not important enough for them to be thinking about. But that can become very real. And then all of a sudden, if you start acting out from that place, you become defensive, you become combative, then it starts to become very real. Next time you're around those people, oh my God, here comes Jim again. So that's more of a real life example of what the scripture is talking about. Is that making sense? But the, the deeper lesson here is mistrust your mind. You cannot think a true thought, a real thought. All you can have is an opinion. Opinions are like rear ends. Everyone has one and they usually stink. Would you say the thought I am is not a true thought? The or... thought I am is also an illusion. Hmm. Okay. But the useful thought, okay. because it redirects the mind away from the world towards the real self. Do not confuse the practice for the goal. Okay, thank you. Does that make sense? Yeah. I just take it as like one of the few things that are, the only thing really that is apodictic is I exist. Um, but I don't well, know. You, you go through the day all the time and you never think the thought I am. But you um, don't disappear. Yeah, exactly. But uh, like all my experiences validate that I am a valid, you know, that I am. And that's an a nice thought construct. It's a useful one, Justin. Okay. But when you're there at the computer at work and you're mm -hmm. totally engaged in accounting, mm -hmm. you're probably not engaged in self inquiry. But yeah. you do not disappear when yeah. you don't have the thought, I am. No, I agree. Yeah, completely. Okay. Yeah, the mind is nothing but imagination either way. Is that what you're saying? Yeah. Or, okay. But it's a useful <laughs> thought. Uh, uh, Osho used to say that it's like this. Someone is inside a building and it's dark and all the curtains are drawn and someone comes in and says, run, the house is on fire and grabs them and takes them outside. And they say, oh, it's bright and clear. And they look back and there was nothing wrong with the house. So it's a trick. All of yoga in the end is a trick. So that doesn't mean it's not useful and not powerful. Thank you. But the Vedanta itself, the teaching of Ramana Maharshi, the teacher of teaching of Krishna himself, from the standpoint of the absolute, is all mine. Only aham is real. Does that mean not don't read Gita? Of course you should read Gita. Until you don't need to read Gita. Forgive my ignorance. Um, what, is, what is the translation of aham? Aham just merely means I, first person pronoun. Okay, thank you.
Sorry. Going on. I'm going to crack that window. It's getting really warm in here. You got it. All right, next verse. Satta sarva padarthanam nanya sanveda nadrite sankalpa sankshaya drama chintam antam avishyate. Rama, there is no other existence for all objects without perception or consciousness. By the destruction of thought, or imagination, pure consciousness alone remains. So, here is where Vedanta comes so close to contemporary quantum physics. Here the scripture is saying, there is no existence for phenomena apart from perception of it. Now, I like those experiments they do with light, where if you don't measure it, it behaves like energy. If you start to watch and measure it, it behaves like photons, like mass. The act of cognition makes it come into corporeal existence. That's what the scripture is saying. And this text was written at least a thousand years ago, maybe 1500 years ago. And quantum physics is just now catching up to it. But then the second part of the verse is this. Cease to cognize it and it goes out of existence. I'm gonna tell you a true story. So I have a dear friend whose mother is in her 90s. No, I lied, in her late 80s. Anyway, she's in a memory care unit in Southern California. And what he's discovered She'll call him up and she'll be saying, oh, this terrible problem, this terrible problem, this terrible problem. And then half an hour later, she's forgotten it. And it no longer exists. Not only as a problem, it doesn't exist at all because she doesn't remember it. Isn't that interesting? So too many of us want to lie there in bed facing the wall, reviewing our misery, going over all the hurts and the slights, and the traumas. Yoga says, turn your mind away from it. In time, it will cease to exist. Now, if it's lodged there in the unconscious as a trauma, at some deep level, you're still thinking about it all the time. This is a very subtle practice. But mainly as we're moving through our day, let go, let go. Any thoughts on this?
going on? Uh, that was the last verse, so it's a concluding verse of the chapter. All right, next chapter. Should I read the last verse of Sanskrit? Please. There's a Sanskrit word. Iti Shri Vashishta Sangrahe Lavano Pakyanam Nam Saptas Saptama Sargaha. Thus ends the seventh chapter titled The Story of Lavana in the Abridgment of Yoga Vashishta. All right. Next chapter. Ashtama Sargaha, chapter 8. Bhargava. Bhargavo Pakhyanam, the story of Bhargava. Section 1. Bhargavam no Rajyam. Bhargava's kingdom of the fancy, castle in the air. Vashishto Vacha Ekam Brahma Chida Kasham Sarvatmakam Akhindatam Hita Brahmani Vishvashri Pratibhama Atra Rupini. Vashishto said, Brahman or the Supreme Spirit is one. The sky or space of consciousness of the nature of the whole and undivided. The splendor that is the universe existing in Brahman is of the nature of a mere appearance or a reflection. Yes. So there is the point of the whole chapter. Brahman is one without a second which each one of us experiences as aham, I. The whole world, gross and subtle, past, present and future, exists in consciousness like a reflection, like a hologram, like a dream. Take it easy. Going on. Atra bharga pritantam kathayami tavanadhyya sanao mandara shailasya bhrigu purva atyata. Sinless one, in this connection, I shall tell you the history of Bhargava, the son of Bhrigu. Once upon a time, the sage Bhrigu did penance in the forest of the Mandara mountain. Going on. Nirvikalpa samadhiste tasmin shukre tadatmaja tadarsha pyas saram tatra kachantim nabhasa patha. When he was absorbed in Nirvikalpa samadhi, the yogic state of absolute consciousness, his son Sukra saw there a celestial damsel going through the path of the sky. So his son, is it Sh Shukra? Shukra. Shukra, yes. Sees the gal in the air going on. Atatam manasadhyayan tatraiva mi litekshana arambadvan manorajyam tayasaha. Yathasukham. Contemplating her by his mind there itself with closed eyes, he, he then started to build castles in the air along with her at pleasure. So he mentally starts to do a dalliance with the celestial damsel, building a palace in the air for them to live in and sport in. Going on. Swarge vihatuma rebhe tata sankalpa matrataha punya kshayanu sandhanat papatavan ni mandale. He then began to sport with her in the heaven by mere imagination. By inquiry into or thinking of the destruction of religious merit, he fell down on the region of the earth. So there he is in his fancy doing the mufti pufti with this gal and therefore he did not keep his religious vows as a result of which in this fancy he leaves the castle in the air and he falls down to earth now let's see what happens to him Tata tasya kramat jiva. Shalitama the Matada Shalin Bhukta Vata Putrao Bhutvasa Tapasis Titaha. 
then his soul in due course attained to the state of rice. Subsequently, having become the son of one who ate the rice, he was again established in austerity. So he must have done some pretty nasty things with this woman because he not only comes down to the world, he comes back as rice. Well, he gets eaten by a noble person. So after that, he's dead rice. He comes back as a Brahmana doing austerities. Careful, you don't want to come back rice. Going on. Avasat meru kahane manvantara mayam tata dharma chinta parish branta branchar jato matrama hipatihi he lived in the deep woods of the Meru mountain for a full manvatara, manvantara, a very long period in the world's cycle. He was then born as the king of the Madra country because of deviation from considerations of moral duty. So he doesn't get to stay a Brahmin because he deviated from his moral duties. He has to suffer and be a king. <laughs> Mind you, this is literature. This is literature. But it, if you think about it, how many of us have done things like we get involved in satsang, we start coming regularly, we do our scriptural study, but then we want to go play. We start playing. Meaning you live an extroverted life, drug, sex, and rock and roll. Then you get up in the morning, you try to meditate. Oh, my mind's just too much of a mess. I don't think I will today. And you find that you become an extroverted person. And your time as a yogi became a memory only. Now, hopefully, at some point, you'll get sick and tired of being sick and tired. And you return to the path. Now, all of this is happening for Shukra just in his mind. Going on. Evam Anyani Janmani. Samutpetya bahunyatha samangyaya tate jata tapasvi tapasajamata. Thus, having passed into several other births, he was then born on the banks of the river Samanga as a tapasvin, a person performing religious austerity, and the son of an ascetic. So, finally, through expiating his negative propensities and acquiring some purity, he becomes a tapasvin, someone who lives a life of austerities, burning out those karmas, going on. Atha kalena mahata, mrigo shukra samudbhava, kaya statra papato vyam, Panava Pavanatapa Jarjaraha. Then, after the lapse of a long time, the body of Shukra, born of Bhrigu, fell down on the ground there, worn out by wind and the heat of the sun. So Shukra has been in a trance this whole time, imagining these lifetimes. Well, he lost enough awareness of his body that it just keels over and falls down. Going on. Atta Varsha Sahasrena Samadhe Virato Briguhu Putram Matva Mritam Kopat Kalam Shaptum Iyeshasa. Then Brigu, who ended his Samadhi or yogic absorption after a very large number of years, thinking that his son was dead, hastened to curse the god of death out of anger. So, Rigu comes out of his samadhi and 
everybody is saying, Shukra, oh, he died. So he's upset. He's going to curse with a yam. Going on. Adi Bhautikat Dehotha Kalo Bhrigo Mupaya Yau Upetya Kupitam Kalo Munim Provach Sanyavan. Then the god of death, assuming a material body, approached Bhrigo. Having come near the angry sage, the god of death spoke, pacifying him. So Yama shows up for him. Let's see what he says. Going on. Twam anantapa vipro vayam niyati palaka palakaha kemurka ivasar vagnya mudhamam shukta mitchasi. You are a Brahmana of boundless austerity. We are guardians of destiny. O oh, all knowing one, why do you wish to curse me in vain like a fool would do? Yes, you should know better. You should know. Going on. Mano hi tava putrasya samadhau tvai sanstite santya jetam vapur gatva vishranchim bhubu jetivi. When you were established in samadhi or yogic absorption, the mind of your son, having indeed left this body and having gone to Vishwachi, the celestial damsel, enjoyed in heaven. So here, Yam's gonna tell him what happened to his to his son. So he's explaining the whole issue going on. Mahipo dhivaro vansha tata sapartha kukutaha evam putra vichitrasu vasana vashata swataha sa yonishu charitvadhya jato. Viprakumarakaha Tapasrati Te Putraha Samangasa Ritashtate Having himself gone round varied births or forms of existence, such as a king, a fisherman, a bamboo, a serpent, and a cock, under the influence of his mental impressions, he is at present born as the son of a Brahmana. Your son is performing austerity on the banks of the river, river Samanga. So again, we have these time dilation stories. Rigu is there in Samadhi. How long? In that all these lifetimes of his son, Shukra. Oh, he's currently down the road doing tapas. He's the son of another going on. Tam itchasi yadi drushtam jnane trena lokaya evam muktao mahurtena pratibhana vashadasau samang jayam tate putram alokya punarayayao. If you want to see him, perceive him with the eye of knowledge. Thus told, that Bhrigu, by the power of his understanding, having seen his son on the bank of the Samanga River, within a muhurta, or 48 minutes, arrived again at his place. So, Bhrigu has these cities, so he goes into meditation, and he's able to see his son over yonder. So he checks him out for 48 minutes, then he comes back. Going on. Section 2. Bhargava Prabhodhanam, awakening of Bhargava or Shukra, the son of Jiva. Tata Kalo Bhrigur Shveshva Samangaya Tatamgatao Chantendriyam Samadhistam Tamdrishtva Buddha Itamyayam Iti Kalasya Sankalpat Samadhe Viraramsaha. Then the god of death and Bhrigu went to the bank of the Samangra river. Seeing him established in Samadhi or yogic absorption with his senses calmed, the god of death willed, let him wake up. By this, he ceased from his Samadhi or yogic absorption. So they see Shukra absorbed in Samadhi. 
So Yom and Brigo, they, they are on a, a, a pilgrimage to go see Shukra. So they arrive and they wake him up. Let's see what happens. Udmilya netritao drishtva shantam pacha uvachasa bhavato darshane naham param nirvritti magataha Having opened his eyes and seen the two persons, he told these calm words, I have attained to supreme satisfaction by your sight. So he comes out, sees Yama, the god of death, and Brigu probably doesn't even recognize him. But I am pleased by having seen you. Welcome, dudes. Let's see what happens. Iti procha namastyantam provacha prigo ratmajam smaratmanam prabuddhosi tata sopi prabhodita muhurta matra sansar sasmara janmantara tasham nijam. To his son, bowing to him after having told us, Brigo said, Remember yourself. You are awakened. Then he too, having been roused, remembering his own state in former births in just a muhurta or 48 minutes. So we have the enlightenment of Shukra. He remembers who he is, Shidakasha, and also remembers that formerly he was rice and fish and janitor in the pyramids, whatever it was that he was. And that at one point he was the son of Prabhu. Going on. Putishtam tata gachama pashyama purva kamba puhu iti tasya vacha shrutva praposte madaram shanat drishtva tu bhargavastatra shushkam tanu uvachasa Get up, father. Let us go and see my previous body. Hearing these words of Bhargava or Shukra, they reached the Mandara mountain in a moment. Bhargava or Shukra, seeing there his dried up body, said thus. So, they have these occult powers. It's literary. It's for the story. So, Brigu and the Shukra in the form of the young Tapaswan they zip up to the mountains and there's Shukra like a mummy, all dried up, just lying there. Nirasta kalpana jalam yam shete sukhamvane achit tatvam vina nanyat shreyam pashyami jantushu this body sleeps happily in the forest with the web of thoughts or fancy thrown out or destroyed. I do not see any other good in beings except the state of the absence of thoughts. So, the mummy Shukra who's there, why bother to wake him up? So, what is the scripture saying here? You must have a mind in order to be miserable. The mind is essential for suffering. You don't need a mind to be happy. Does that mean the highest state is some sort of insensibility? Being in nearby called the Samadhi? No. To repeat, the mind can be reduced to three thoughts. Jiva Bhavana, I feel like a person, I think I'm my body. I feel incomplete. Restless, irritable, discontent. There's not enough. So I have a goal. 
that goal either is fix the world or fix me. And now I start on the journey of kartavya, obligatory action. I gotta struggle and work. Or as Shakespeare says, we grunt and sweat under a weary life. To get more. Maybe this is it. Those three ideas are the mind. They are the world. They are my suffering. They are sansara. They are the karma chakra that has many, many different names. Their causes of India. There's nothing wrong with the perception of name and form. It has no power to make us suffer. There's nothing wrong with the flow of thought. It has no power to afflict us. As long as I've rooted out those three ideas. Any thoughts on this? Going on. Adhashitya vachastasya kala provat bhargavam pravisesham tanu sadho kartavyam manayadvaya gurutvam asurendranam kalyanam astuva iti. Then, interrupting his words, the god of death said to Bhargava or Shukra, Sage, enter this body. With this body, the office of the teacher of Asuras, superhuman beings opposed to the demigods, demigods, ought to be carried out by you. Let there be good fortune to you. So, what is his eternal swadharma going to be? Shukra, who's the son of Bhrigu, gets a job being king of the demons, being an enlightened demon. He must have done nasty things to that celestial woman. <laughs> now, if he's a real man of wisdom, what do I care what job the Lord has given? Now, what does that mean for you and me? Self-realization doesn't mean that you become a Buddha, that you wear orange, that you get a five-syllable ungroundable name. The Lord may say, go to the office. Do that job. Take care of this wife. Take care of this husband. But for the yogi, for the woman or man of wisdom, it doesn't matter. Wherever the Lord puts this body mind into that, however, the Lord. Has the character act in the play? Some people are the lead character in the play. Others of us just have a bit part. But all of us take off the makeup and the costume. None of it is more than just that. Going on. Uktva chantar hite tasmin tatyajya dvija bhavana shukradeham vishet shatha bhargavo niyate vashaha chakarapyanam tasya prokshanaisa bragus tada. When the god of death became invisible after having said thus, the son of Bhrigu. Under the influence of destiny, having abandoned the idea of a Brahmana, 
entered the body of Shukra. Then Bhrigu performed the regeneration of the body by sprinkling with consecrated water. So, Shukra number two dives into the body of Shukra number one. <laughs> Bhrigu gets some holy water, sprinkles it, and all of a sudden this dried up mummy pumps up and comes back to life. Going on. Atha shukra samuthyaya vavande pitaram sukhi bhargavakhyanam e tattvam vicharaya yathamati then Shukra, having got up, saluted his father happily. You reflect on the story of the son of Bhrigu to the best of your knowledge. So the point is, name and form is just the play of thought. Ultimately, bordered by the force of our past and our destiny. Happiness does not come from trying to change whether or not you're a Brahmin and you then think you're gonna be rice or you're gonna be a fish or you're gonna be a tribal person king, janitor, the ego says this isn't working, I'll be happy when. My personal image that I like I'm the ball bearing in God's pinball machine. And the Lord goes whack with the flippers. And this one goes ka chong ka chong ka chong ka chong ka chong ka chong And the Lord goes whack with the light goes ka chong 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 ka chong. And at some point, point it's going to go into the gutter. Game over. And the Lord will put a quarter in. After the gold. Enjoy the ride. Any thoughts on this story? All right, we'll end here. Where do we start next week? A new section. Section 3, verse 28. All right. Om Purnamada Purnamidam Purnat Purnamudachate Purnasya Purnamadaya Purnameva Vashishate Om Shanti 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 Hari Om Sri Rupyo Namaha Hari Om Om Thank you all.